Thank you. 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 We're going to be reading from the scriptures. Um, we're starting at Job chapter 34. Verse 1. Then Eliabu responded and said, Hear my words, you wise men. Give ear to me, you who have knowledge. For the ear tries words as the plate tastes food. Let us choose what is right for us. Let us know among us what is good. For Eob has said, I am righteous, but El has taken away my right. Would I lie concerning my right? My wound is incurable, without transgression. Verse 7. What man is like Eob, who drinks mocking like water, who goes in company with the workers of wickedness, and walks with men of wrongness? For he has said, It does not profit a man that he takes delight in Elohim. Therefore, listen to me, you men of heart. Far be it from El to do wrong, and from the Almighty to commit unrighteousness. For he repays man's work to him, and makes man to find a reward according to his path. Verse 12. The truth is, El does not do wrong, and the Almighty does not twist right ruling. Who has assigned to him the earth, and who has laid out all the world? If he sets his heart on him, should he gather himself his spirit and his breath? All flesh would expire together, and man return to dust. If you have understanding, hear this. Give ear to the sound of my words. Should the one who hates right ruling govern? Or would you declare a most righteous one wrong? Who shall say to a sovereign, Beli Ya'al, to nobles, wrong one? Who is not partial to princes, nor regards the rich more than the poor? For they are all the work of his hands. Verse 20. In a moment they die. In the middle of the night, the people are shaken and pass away, and the mighty are taken away without a hand. For his eyes are on the ways of man, and he sees all his steps. There is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of wickedness hide themselves. For he sets a man no stated time to appear before El in right ruling. He breaks in pieces the mighty without inquiry, and puts others to their place. Truly, he knows their works, and he shall overthrow in the night, and they are crushed. Verse 26. As wrong ones, he slaps them in the presence of onlookers, because they turned from following him, and they regarded not all his ways. So as to cause the cry of the poor to come to him, for he hears the cry of the afflicted. And when he is silent, who would then condemn and when he hides his face, who then sees him, whether it is against a nation or a man alone? So that a defiled one should not reign, lest the people be ensnared. For has anyone said to El, I have taken away, I do not act corruptly? Verse 32. Teach me what I do not see. If I have done unrighteousness, I shall not do so again. Should he repay you because you have refused? For you choose, and not I. Therefore speak what you know. Let men of heart say to me, and a wise man who listens to me, Eob does not speak with knowledge, and his words are without wisdom. Would that Eob be tried to the end, since his answers are like those of wicked men? For he adds rebellion to his sin. He claps his hands among us, and multiplies his words against the help. Yeah, I find it interesting, this Elihu guy. Now, is he, he's a new person, right? He's a new person that jumped in after Yob's friends had, had their say. I believe he's the youngest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, a, he's, he's the, the youngest the of all of them. So. I just find it interesting because he's made a lot of assertions about Job, and he really doesn't know Job. He's making a lot of assumptions, saying that, you know, you Job, you've said it's, it's a waste to try to please you for it and all this stuff. I'm trying to see where he's getting that from. He doesn't know him. Seems like he's just making accusations without proof. 
I don't know. That's... No, I think these are three friends. Mm-hmm. They are. Three friends? No. Okay. Right. So I thought Elihu was the new young guy that's not one of his friends that pretty much is an outsider and pretty much allowed Joe's three friends to speak first and now he speaks. No, they all came from afar from the beginning of the, of the, of the book. He just waited because he was the youngest yeah, to okay. speak. He just let all his elders speak first. Um, okay. And he told him in like the last chapter, the last two chapters, you know, I was waiting for you guys to say something wise, but you basically haven't. So now I'll, I'll no longer well, hold my peace. First, yeah. Um, yeah, I just think, it's, I mean, he's, he, I, I'm always reminded about the first chapter of you being mm-hmm. righteous and you who are saying it himself. Um, and like we mentioned before, you know, you stood by his righteousness and i think that's where it's, it's taken out of context and saying you know where his, his now eliyahu is saying oh well what do you say and um he said in verse five for yoga said i am righteous and el has taken away my judgment should i lie against my right my wound is incurable without transgression um so he's it's just, he's doing the same thing that the other guys were doing basically pinning pinning yo as a as a transgressor as a wicked man because Yo hasn't necessarily said that I that he sinned and this is why it's come about. He's mentioned that he's a sinner and in, in more of a general notion, but not so much that this is why everything's happened to him. Interesting <clears throat> in verse let's see it says um, it says verse seven in my translation. Tell me has there ever been a man like Yo with his thirst for irreverent talk? He chooses evil people as companions. To me, how can that guy be his friend and accusing him of this, yet he's basically calling himself evil? No, no, he's not saying that. I get what you're going, but he's basically saying the people that he would he would be around, he wouldn't say that himself. He's talking about this is where mm-hmm. Joe must be getting all his wickedness from because he's around um, scoffers and, and he's just, all the words that are coming out of his mouth are scornful. I mean, it kind of comes back to the conversation we were reading throughout the scriptures, and it sounds like, you know, whether or not Yo was questioning you were too much. That's kind of what it it sounds like. Yeah. But I love that. Did anybody want to note anything? Negative ones? No, the only thing I have is I agree with that because Ellie, who is actually – he believes that Job is questioning you who is sovereignty and questioning you that whether you who is righteous or not. Because in this chapter two, Elihu says, you know, Yahuwah gives to people what they deserve according to their deeds and stuff. So he thinks that Job is trying to attack you and say, you're not righteous, you know, you're you're doing this to me, un, um, you're making me suffer undeserving. Yeah. So that's what I tell too. Who wants to read the next chapter? Go. Go. Okay. Okay. Raise your hand. Okay. All right, Zero. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. you know. I'm reading from the ISR as well. Chapter 35. And Elihu responded and said, Do you think this is right? Do you say my righteousness is more than that of El? For you say, oh, of what use is it to you? What do I gain more than if I have sinned, if I had sinned? Let me answer you and your friends with you. Look to the heavens and see, and consider the clouds which are higher than you. Six, if you sin, what would you do, what would you do against him? If your transgressions are increased, what would you do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Verse 8, your wrong is for a man like yourself and your righteousness for a son of man. Because of the multitude of oppressions, they cry out. They cry out for help because of the arm of the many. And no one says, where is Eloah, my maker, who gives songs in the night? 11, teaching us more than the beast of the earth and make us wiser than the birds of the heavens. There they cry, but he answers not because of the pride of evil ones. Only it is false that El does not hear, and that the Almighty pays no attention to it. Although you say you do not see him, yet right ruin is before him, and you wait for him. And now 
Is it for not that his displeasure has come, yet he has not taken note of extreme arrogance? Soyo opens his mouth in vain. He increases his words without knowledge. Anybody got anything? I'm wait. I'm honestly waiting for you who would have respond. <laughs> I'm really waiting for you who would respond to the next few chapters. But you guys have anything? Yeah, it's, again, I, I see the same story. It's insertion after insertion. He's saying he's trying to say that Job looks at it like, what's the point of me being righteous? And like, yeah, Job is not saying any of this. He's just using. That's it. That's it. And that's pretty much what I see so far. It's pretty much the same story. This guy just keeps attacking Job, yet there's no proof that he said any of this stuff or even thought of stuff like this. I think he's taking out of context what Job has said. And he, this guy just, you know, for some reason, he's keeps attacking him. I think this is why fellowship's so important, I guess, because you really see what's going on in someone's life, so you know what they've gone through, what they've been through, what, what their life yeah, really look why, like. Yeah. Um, because it's like, at the same time, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie, when there's things that have happened to people, I wonder if it's because of sin. Even in my own life, I wonder, okay, is it because of sin or maybe it's not? And I look at them like that, but I haven't sinned. And, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of like, where's the fine line? And I guess what I draw all from this is we have to have, we have to have discernment in what Yahuwah is doing, you know? So... I mean, sometimes he punishes Israel just because they were sinning. There's other times where he did it because he was testing them so that they knew that he was their Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. that, right. You know? Um, and we have 10 minutes, by the way, for this one. So it's kind of like, I don't know, it's just, it's just a matter of, of discerning and really seeking Yahuwah and at the same time not, I guess, you know, I go back to you, Doug, but not questioning Yahuwah in a certain way, in a, in a manner that's kind of questionable. So, but... All right, we'll go to the next chapter. We have 10 minutes, and this chapter has 33 percent. Yeah, I think we should restart the meeting. Okie dokie. Just, just in case. You want to edit? Okay. Yeah, we'll come back right in. <laughs> All right, we're going to end the meeting, and then we'll go, we'll call right back in and start the next